There you go. Feeder, just the way I'm feeling. XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've got a great show lined up this week, haven't we? Go on, what have you got planned? Uh, well, I've got songs from David Bowie, Thin Lizzy, Gene, ACDC, you heard Feeder there, you got, oh, oh, Smiths, mm. all mm. that. We've mm. got a great feature, a new feature. Um, spoke to Carl in the week, and we worked out a new feature where, um, people are gonna give him sort of, like, problems to solve. There could be scenarios, there could be management scenarios at work, you know, problem solving, things like that, organising things. He's a very good organiser, so I'll tell you what, tell you what happened. He's dropping Do We Need Him, because he's getting fed up with scientists. He thinks there's a conspiracy and they're getting together, and they're never gonna lose an animal. <laughs> right. So he's just fed up with that. Uh, Rockbusters, we've got some great prizes. Uh... Well, have you seen them yet? No. Nah. Be careful. They're not going to be great, I just they? peeked in and all I'm going to say to you is, Fools and Horses Christmas special? <laughs> not the little one with the little car. With the little one. car, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. That is excellent. Carl, what have you got to say for yourself? Hold on, it was a rollover, wasn't it? Because you really mucked up yeah. Rockbusters last time. What was he doing? It's saying FP for the whole thing. No, FD you were saying and it was Frida Payne. Have you written the clues down this week? Because that seems like an obvious way I've, to improve I've, this. Yeah, I'll write the clues down. A week down. before he couldn't remember what the answer was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you learn by your mistakes and that. Mm. You don't. <laughs> well. So, so yeah. So, I'll give you a little taster. But we were um. having a, a pizza in a, in a pizza establishment. Uh, when was it? Wednesday or Thursday? Yeah. And, uh, he was going, I'm a good organiser, I'm a good problem solver. Give me any, any scenario, right? Obviously he didn't say scenario. Um, and I went, okay then, so uh, you're the manager of this place, and there's a couple there, elderly couple, they're about 60. They've had a lovely meal. He went, yeah, right. I went, but the, the gentleman, he's got a little bit of a heart condition, he takes a pill after his meal, as he should, after meals. <gasps> he's only taken Viagra. Oh. And now he's stuck in. Wedged in? Wedged in. We've it's all gone. Been there. It's gone and it's stopping him getting out from the table. Yeah. So what would you do? He went, what? He's stuck in because of his dick. I went, yeah. He went, right. He said, I'd use the situation, I'd make cash. I said, you're not going anywhere, do you want a pudding? <laughs> <laughs> Entrepreneurial. <laughs> yeah. I like it, Carl. Anyway, oh. so that's that sorted. I've got the job on that. Next, I went, okay. Now that, oh, you won't believe it, next day, there's a little problem in the toilets, two, two gay men were having sex and they got stuck in, in each, each other. other. Yeah, yeah. He went, right. I'd say, is it the same fella ye as yesterday with Viagra? If so, why was he let in again? He was on the door. <laughs> yeah. I went, it's not, it's too yeah. He goes, right. Does his wife know he's cheating on <laughs> Yeah. He went, right, I'd go down, I w I'd go, and then he went, Oh, I'd say this isn't a restaurant problem, call an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Strictly speaking, not a restaurant problem, no. <laughs> but uh, alright. Huh? Am I right? Well, I don't know. Would you give me the job if, if say, like, you were the boss of that restaurant and you- uh, Do you know what I like about this? At no point did he say, Gervais, why are you being so mental? Yeah, yeah. Why would someone get stuck because they took Viagra by mistake and two people would get stuck in each but other- But you've heard the stories from his past. <laughs> that is a perfectly legitimate situation <laughs> yeah, to find yourself yeah. in if you grew yeah. up in his part of What Manchester. would you do if there was two fellows with big heads and webbed feet and they had a horse in a- Well, what I'd do is- What would you do? What did you do when you, when you first saw him? What, saw the, uh, the, the lads with the big heads and Yeah, that. yeah. Um, we should very quickly remind people if they didn't listen to that particular show. Um, they were, they had webbed hands. Yeah. Did they, or webbed feet? Well, they had, they had webbed hands. Right. And big and heads. And enormous heads. But it wasn't related. But they weren't related to I know, to they were other. completely no, 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 separate No, but people. I'm saying that the webbed hands isn't due to the fact they've got a big head. No, sure. It's two different things. We're just unlucky. Yeah. No, hold on. If they weren't related, th and they both had webbed hands and big heads, I'm saying there was a condition that, had, that no. was related that had those two con I don't think it was. So what do you think the chances of that are? They're not related, and he goes, oh, you've got a big head and webbed hands as well. Yeah, just a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah. I, d I honestly don't think it was related. Right. Because I've I've seen I've I've since seen the the same problem again on another kid with a big head. His hands look good. Right. So the, do you think the big head is just a separate issue? Yeah, it's a totally different illness. It's right. like having a headache and a cold at the same time. Right. It's, so you know. not always connected. But the weird thing is, right, looking looking around in the week at weird stuff on the uh, on the internet. Yeah. There's this woman who's got a big head. Oh yeah. And. Um, she was fed up with it because when she was walking down the street, it was so big, she couldn't hold it up. Right. Right? She couldn't hold it up. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, keep, shut up. So, she when, she, hold it up. when she was walking, she, her eyes were hurting because she had to sort of look up all the time because her head was that heavy, her chin was sort of balanced on her chest. Right. right? And she'd have to peek up, yeah. So, uh, she goes to the doctors and this was after years and years and, uh, said, you know, I thought I could put up with it but I can't. It's, it's How big eyes. was her head? It's I big, mean, it, I don't know if it was like big because there wasn't a picture. I don't know if it was just big or a lot of bone. 
So it was heavy. <laughs> heavy. Right, like the elephant man, just so, outcrops. Yeah, right. yeah. So, uh, so the doctor said, yeah, um, we can sort that out. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll have to take your head off. Right. Okay, okay well, so listen, listen keep to going. This. Listen, okay, keep going. Because no. I, again, I, what you don't seem to understand is I, I have the same reaction to you when I see it. Yeah. What? Right? You're quizzical yourself. So I looked at it, they took her head off, um, chipped away a bit of the bone, mm -hmm. made her head lighter, put it back on. <laughs> right, play the Smiths. They ours. took a woman's head off. Yeah, yeah. this is ours, play the Smiths. <laughs> yeah. And if you'd like to ask Carl something, details coming up soon. How's that? Ask by the Smiths on XFM 104.9. So, uh, what's the email, Carl? If people want to ask you something, a problem, they've got a problem to solve. It could be anything. It could be a personal problem, it could be a scenario, it could be about, uh, it could be about war. It could be anything. But it's just... Or it could be more flippant, I suppose, and like Yeah, it yeah, could be. Yeah, but I prefer stuff that I could so sort. you get your teeth into. And, and, and actually, you know, sort out. What, war, like war? War is too, it's a bit... Bit big for me, that one. Do you think? I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? If Tony Blair came to you and he went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of trouble here. I, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I've tried spin. I've tried being tough. I've tried backing down. I've tried getting other countries involved. They don't want to know. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, you don't know? Tricky one. I don't it's get, a tricky one. It's a tricky one, yeah. I don't worry about it. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get in the bath, put a mattress on the- on top of you. That's it. Sorry, wh why are you doing <laughs> that? Ooh, slow down. Why are you doing that? That's what they say you do, innit, if it kicks off. If so what kicks off? If, if, there's, if there's a war and that, you, you get in the bath, put a mattress on top. Right. Did they do that in the Second World War for six years? Was that make, making bunk beds? That's just what I read somewhere. Yeah. You get, is the bath full of water? Uh, no. No, no, no. 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 Might be daft. Okay. Yeah, I think that I think they were enamel baths then though. I think they'd stop a bit of shrapnel. I think the plastic ones you get nowadays would probably melt on you. And the mattress where your dad has cut it in half, all the foam would come out and the springs would get you in the eye. Oh, talking about me dad. Steve, you'll love this, right? Go on. Um my dad hates uh he hates being ripped off, right? Yes. Well no, I can relate to that, that's important. Um <laughs> hates coming to London now. He always wants me to go and see them rather than come here because he just thinks London is like a big rip off. Mm. Uh, last time he came he got annoyed because I bought him a scone and a cup of tea for like three of us and it was fourteen pounds and he just yeah. was livid. And then uh, we had an argument about that and then <coughs> we went to the Millennium Wheel and I said, do you fancy going on this? He said, oh, all right. And then he saw the price and it was something like twenty quid or something. And he said, twenty quid to go up in the air to look at stuff that's on the ground. He said, I might as well stay on the ground. Brilliant. Right? Thought, good point. His logic is impeccable. So anyway, this is going on. Anyway, he spoke to me the other day, I said, how are things? Are they alright now? He said, oh, being ripped off. I said, why? He said he ordered, do you know the place where he got a new bed from because he cut the other one of in course, off, yeah. right? He, uh, he got this bed out of a catalogue. So, uh, so he sorted out a payment on the phone. He said, look, you're ripping me off a bit here on the interest thing, but, um, well, let's do a deal. We'll sort out a new monthly payment. That's different to the, what it says in the catalogue. And he said, yeah, we'll go along with that. Anyway, so he sorted that out, he was happy, the bed arrived, it's a nice bed, he said, that's great. So anyway, uh, he got the bill for it, and it was the original price. Oh, I thought it might be the case, yeah. Right. So he called up and said, I'm not happy with this. He said, we, we said a deal, and like, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, right, don't send me your catalogues anymore. He said, I'm not, I'm not buying anything from you, you're rip-off merchants. Uh -huh. Right. Um, so anyway, a few, few weeks go by. Post comes, only another catalogue oh, in the post. He's livid. Right, so he was well annoyed. Yeah. So he looked on the back, and it said on it, "This catalogue will always be property of you know the company that that does it." Um, if w so, you can't throw it away. If if we request to have it back, we've got the permission to to get it back off you. Right. right? So he thought, right, well they're out of order. I told them not to send me one, and they have done, and they're saying I can't chuck it away. So he called them up. And said, uh, all right, Mr. Pilkington here, bought a bed off you, you conned me, and that. <laughs> but, you know, forget that. We've, yeah. we've dealt with that. You've sent me a catalogue, I told you not to. It says on the back here that this will always be yours, yeah? So, in a way, you're using my house as a warehouse. I'll be charging you 26 pence or something uh, a day. Brilliant. 
He said, you already owe me £6.28. <laughs> Something like that. Genius. And, uh, yeah, he sorted it out. So again, you know, it's- it So hang on, but are they going along with this? I don't know what happened. He said they sounded annoyed and said they'd get back to him and they haven't, but he said, I'm not bothered. They can take as long as they want because the money just keeps going up. Yeah. 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 So, what sort of profit has he made so far? Well, when I spoke to him in the week, it was like £6-odd. Yeah. That was- I think that was on Tuesday, so, so he's, he's, he's- you know, he's just leaving. It's like laughing. an investment. Yeah. It's like an antique. He's it's bought just, it. Yeah, yeah. It's just going up every day, so, uh, well, keep us posted on that. That's yeah, dynamite. I, 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 one day we need to speak to your father. Yeah, I think so. So many questions I need think to be asked of him. In fact, I might sit and give you a letter to take home. <laughs> yeah. Dear Mr. Pilkington, <laughs> your son Carl. <laughs> New single from uh, Nick Cave. I think I'm looking forward to it. That's the uh, forthcoming single from Nick Cave from his album Nocturama. That's called Bring It On. That's great. I, I must admit, I was a latecomer to Nick Cave. He's I was, extraordinary, yeah. Uh, I mean, years into his solo stuff before, you know, I decided that he was brilliant. Mm, yeah, he's fantastic. No, he's, he's fantastic. Um, I had some exciting news this week, Carl. You'll be pleased yeah. to find out. Um, I d I, I'm worried that you might get a little bit jealous because it's obviously going to impact on your world quite strongly. Because I know you think you like things to be quite, the, quite you know, samey. You like the status quo to be maintained. You like the fact that in the past, you know, we've had some crosswords. You know, because you've. I remember. What did you think of me when I first walked in? When I first came in on the yeah, first well, day of XFL? I don't know why you're making a big deal. Do you want to bring? Do you want to I'm just being honest though. I'm just being honest about a lot of people who see you for the first time sort of go, "Well, he's a bit weird." <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I know that Steve that you brought it up, and then you're again. But I'm sure that wasn't what he said before. No, did he, he didn't. Say before I, yeah, he, well, well, he's I, a bit weird. Yeah, well, I, he looked at you, and uh, I knew I could see by the look on his face. You know when uh, when you know your your kid, and your kid's sort of scared of something, and they go, "Why is your kid?" goes, "Oh, he doesn't like pigeons or spiders." Right. It was like that when I saw Carl, and I brought you in, and I went, "What do you think of that, Carl?" I could see the look on his face that he d he was disturbed. Sure. And then, as he said. You get used to it, don't you? Yeah, you get used to it. And you, and you have changed a little bit. Your hair's a bit smarter now, and you've got some nicer glasses and that, I think. <laughs> or I might just get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Don't bring it up, Steve. Don't well, look at me like that. So you say that you think some other people in the office thought the same? Do you know that for sure? Carl. Did you discuss it? Carl. Yeah, I think I think they do, yeah. Okay, leave it there then. But not just in the office, as you walk through <laughs> the building. <laughs> It's worse than you ever thought. Well, no, it's not worse than I ever thought because, as you well know, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did I do on uh, Thursday morning? Oh, is this the thing? Uh, For those uh, that perhaps are, are not of the female persuasion listening, there's a magazine. Apparently, it sells quite well. It's one of the sort of female, you know, kind of uh, issues magazines. I think it's called Company Magazine. You know, it's like your sort of. I guess it's a bit like your Moore or your Vanity Fair or yeah. whatever. Anyway, they run every year. The 50 most eligible bachelors in Great Britain section. Ding dong, hello. Who's in there this year? In the f in the 50, in the top 50 of the entire country. And then they vote, they vote, and they put them in order and see who's the most eligible bachelor. But that's of, that's 50 people, right? Most. I mean, the I. It always annoys me slightly because bachelor, it 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 kind of seems like a more sophisticated word for loser. Yeah, it? No. which always sort of unnerves me. And also, they try and do a different 50 every. Yeah, so they're but getting pretty desperate to get different ones. No, you know, no, it's not no, many, no, 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 no. Because also a lot of people who are sort of like successful, uh, uh, you know, are, uh, are married, so there's very little to- No, no, go no, on, no, no, there's a huge- no, there's a huge- I don't know if this is international, it could even be international, I'm sure. not sure actually. So sure. I could be up there with the likes of Justin Timberlake, sure. etc. So, uh, Fred Durst. Yeah. That sort of person, you know. So anyway, l l this is what's exciting, right? Although I'm slightly frustrated because they were telling me that last year, all right, uh, they get- because what happens is the, your, the readers of the magazine, they vote for who they think is number one most eligible bachelor, right? Last year, the, uh, the prize was a two-week trip in the Bahamas, okay? This year, I'm rather annoyed, because all I'm gonna win is a moped. That's whoa, the prize this year, that's whoa, the prize this year, a moped. Whoa, 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 backtrack. What? Sorry? Last year was a two-week trip to Bahamas, and this year- Just what? a moped, I'm all, all I'm gonna get is all a moped. All you're gonna win is a moped. Yeah, I'm you're so- not, You've got no chance. You You've got enough. no chance. Who enough. else is in it? Who else is in it? Well, I mean, I don't know lots and lots of people you never heard of. There was, I know, Duncan from Blue. Ding. Isn't so, no. it, so you're second to him at least no. already. I imagine you're you're gonna come behind the other forty nine. No, 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 so, uh, no, no, but, 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 because you know, there'll be people voting for me. They yeah, get to vote for me. Yeah, Steve. They'll see, was, my, they'll see my photo. And then they can vote for me. Yeah, according to he, I was twenty second most sexy man in the world. I better take that helmet back. I would.
ACDC. Brilliant. You shook me all night long on XFM 104.9. Well, this show is a rockin'. It is. It is. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I came up with a new, uh, um, strand for Carl as well. He likes- he's always got- you know, we've done- uh, I don't think there's a wheat garden where we haven't mentioned an airy kid. A hairy right? child, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, some related to a monkey and that. And I thought you could do a regular thing where he's got to come up with a story about a- an ape or a, a, a monkey, and it's called Chimpanzee That. <laughs> of course. Of I, I, course. Have, I have got one, but I can't remember it at the moment, so I'll just have to It'll think come to you whenever you join the yeah. show. Well, listen, while you're thinking about that, while you're stewing on that, here's a, a problem that someone's emailed in. Mm -hmm. We're taking uh, emails today. If you've got a problem, a concern, um, or, you know, just a general query that you think Carl could answer for you. It could be about anything. It could be about some of the big kind of philosophical questions. Yeah. Um, it could be uh, you know, something to do with war or famine, anything like that. Or it could just be a personal dilemma, you know, something that's happening locally. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have, you and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past. Yeah. And I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into park cars on their skateboards and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch them in the actual act of violence, which is what they've got to do to uh, apparently convict them. So uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. Can't it's rather like when a, a little old lady went and got the eighteen, you know. It's a, it's show. a great you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird because now, now it has got out of hand. Do sure. you know what I mean? Like years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, Summers someone, were nice as well, weren't they? <laughs> well, it did seem that way, didn't it? Yeah. Right, and Police are getting short or But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tear away. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I mean, here. The but thing is, I was I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. Right? <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed himself <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door. And I thought, oh god, this is a fella who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how high I could throw it. <laughs> of course and you it, were. It came Did it keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. <laughs> and, uh, it, it came down. Chucking a uh, stone in the air, love <laughs> it! see how far I could throw brilliant. it. It's brilliant. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you invent that, that game? Right, <laughs> did so you get anyway. the stone for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> go and play with your stone. <laughs> he gave one to Suzanne. Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun funny angle, and it, it, of course it, did. it ate the back of this uh, car, and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it. Yeah. In case yeah. you've got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on a settee, went to sleep, knocked out the door. <laughs> Genius. It's a brilliant plan. It's a brilliant <laughs> plan. <laughs> I couldn't be guilty, I'm asleep. So, so I love the idea. So uh, the thing is, our lounge used to sort of, you could, you could see in from the door, right? So this family, who, uh, who <laughs> saw me do it, let, saw me asleep on the settee and my mum said, go and get the door. And I sort of went, oh, as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. I went to the door, like, rubbing my eyes, and, uh, the fella said, what did you run off for? I saw you. I was like, oh, no. And I didn't see my dad, I went out, it was when he was working, sort of, evenings. So I went out so I didn't have to see my dad. And then the next day I came, fr I came home from school and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said when he looked at me. And then you fell asleep and he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, <laughs> no, yeah. 45 quid, now, the thing Carl. He, right. he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl. Now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But do you know what I mean? It's like, I knew I did wrong, uh, and I was scared that my dad was going to belt me. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I'll be more careful next time. But that was that. clearly good parenting on the part of your father, because these young tykes, that, clearly they don't have the, uh, what the, do you the, do? the, the father's support. I don't do even, I, I don't know if, if I If you were living help. in that street, very quickly, what would you do? What, what, would, what would your approach be? If you were living in his street? What if, what if they'd come over and they'd, they'd just vandalised all your pebbles, right, yeah. that you'd been saving over the years and just threw mm. your gravel away? What would yeah. you do if they just... I'd probably clout one of them. So you'd use violence? 
I think it's the only way sometimes. Sometimes it's the only <laughs> way. And I don't, I don't mean, you know, really bad, but I'd, I'd show them that I'm not putting up with this. Right. And th then the problem is you've got their family coming round and they're probably quite- Go and sleep. Yeah. If you hit a kid and the dad comes down, just go to <laughs> yeah. sleep. Yeah. Just <laughs> think. So, yeah. Um, Equally, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, yeah. a bank job yeah. or a murder- Remember to take the stocking off your head, cause if they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. It well, won't work. It's like with, with our kid, right? He was, um, I told Ricky about this the other day in the, uh, in the pub, but- He's- Is this your brother? He, he never- yeah. Cause he, he was never a terrorist, wasn't he? Well yeah, a little bit, but it he was He did more drive a tank down the, the high street once, didn't he? Yeah, that's when he was in the army. Uh, yeah. But- but, uh, Another story. But- but this time, I remember, um, <laughs> my mum and dad were going out, right, for the evening. And, um, I must have been about, I don't know, five, so our mark was like, I don't know, s probably eighteen, something yeah. like that, seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So my mum and dad go out, and our mark says to me, right, uh, here's a deal, do your little deal. I'm gonna have a load of, uh, women round. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, deal is, I'll let you have your tractor in the house. Wow, right. he had a tank, you had a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah, but his brother didn't have the rocks that Carl had. No, no. So he needed the so tractor to pull his on. toys what kind along. What man was he? He brought a bunch of women round. So, yeah, there was loads of- but do you know when you're a kid you don't think, ooh, I know what they're up to. You're not bothered, are you? Do you know what I mean? You, as long as I've got my tractor, I'm happy. Yeah. So I was- I was- <laughs> <laughs> he, hasn't, he hasn't changed a bit. But how many women did he have around? Was it just him and like a bunch of women? Yeah. Was it like- what, what's his name? What's his name? Like, like Nedwell from Confessions? Yeah, yeah, Confessions yeah. of an older well, brother. Just came around he, he liked orgy. his women. He li Seriously, right? My mum and dad had to move because they got sick of women coming around saying, I've got a kid and it's your marks. They had to move because it got that embarrassed. You know, did you hear- when you were playing on your tractor and there was women running back and forth in underwear, did you ever hear this noise? <laughs> <laughs> Did yeah. you ever hear that? Or kind of wow 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 wow, wow, wow. and just wow, see your wow, brother's wow, wow. ass disappearing down yeah, the exactly. thing being chased by a butcher? Did you ever? It's, it's not important. Is, it? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it's going to be like? Do you think when I'm voted number one most eligible bachelor in Great Britain? <laughs> yeah, and you're coming on your moped. <laughs> I mean, no. Like, am I going to get a tractor? <laughs> Cheering brakes, painkiller. Open brackets, uh -huh. summer rain, close brackets. <laughs> On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Rockbusters? Is it that time? It is yeah. indeed. Last week, of course, it was a disaster. Yeah, every, every Saturday at 16 minutes to two, we do <laughs> Rockbusters! <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have to say that by, I've not really gone through them, but the prices look exactly the same as they were last week. Yeah. There's that t-shirt. So it's a rollover, still... but you haven't added to it? Have you not the point of a rollover is you've got to add to it. That's the excitement. Yeah, not there's, a, there's a couple of albums that. Were, okay, yeah. well, it's okay. also the uh, Fools and Horses um, video with oh, the, the free. I don't think I'm bloody jealous of that. <laughs> I like that <laughs> yeah. little yellow thing. It's a little. Uh, there's a little kind of um, model oh, three-wheeled van. Rodney, you plonker. Oh, <laughs> oh dear What's me. that? Uh, this is what looks to be some kind of best of of the stereo MCs. Don't call me a plonker, you <laughs> wanker. The David Attenborough DVD <laughs> collection. Oh, the hunk shit himself again. <laughs> Oh yeah, the big prize that we tried to give away. You. Now. <laughs> 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 Best Cassandra. Shit out of them. <laughs> 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 supposed to be an impression of? Which <laughs> member of the cast is that? <laughs> uh, is that Cheeky Dell? <laughs> I don't know. Best chill out album ever, the best really? rare guitar volume two, and of course for all our fans, Doctor Who, the Aztecs. That's on DVD and that's uh, one of the William <laughs> Hartnell <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's the worst impression I've ever heard. <laughs> that's brilliant. Right, <laughs> uh, right. Uh, three, three, uh, cryptic stuff. Oh, come on. Right, run the real. Three. I, I can't do it. No, come on. Right, three, three, uh, cryptic. Um, clues. <laughs> Some of which may be wrong. <laughs> yeah, and uh, don't take the letters literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, go on. And, and some initials and it makes up a, uh, makes up a band. So, um, <laughs> here we go then. Uh, there's three of them, you email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Right, here we go then. Yep. Uh, number one. Uh, <laughs> the weather stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> 
the weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, that's R. That's R. Right. The weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. Second one. Um, look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out. <laughs> All right, give us that again. Look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out. Look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out. What's yeah. the initial? R again. R again, interesting. Yeah. And then the third one, uh, <laughs> if you're gonna do that with your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. CK. CK. Alright, so, so quickly, all the way through then. Number one, uh, the weather stinks, doesn't it? That's <laughs> R. Uh, look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out, will you? That's R as well. And then the last one, if you're gonna do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. C K. Ricky dot Gervais at XFM dot co dot UK. Brilliant. Fantastic. Right, we'll have a bit of vinyl. Let's have a classic. Let's have a classic from right. the uh, the Merchant Collection. <laughs> That's going to be the new single from Eminem. Sing for the moment. I like that. It's not On bad, XFM one hundred four point nine. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right, Carl. Alright. <laughs> what's the matter? Huh? Just, um, you know what's the matter. What? Should I explain? I, if you want. I'm sort of an independent adjudicator, and I couldn't help but notice that you both went out to make the teas, <laughs> but only one of you came back with a wig made out of that <laughs> poppy stuff that you pack. Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap, yeah. That you and he didn't want me to do it with sellotape, so I kind of did it with elastic bands. That I found. Uh, apparently, it hurt his ear. It's cut into his head, uh, and and uh, <laughs> look at him. He's annoyed. I don't know. I, I, There's not many uh, many times I've ever done you know any form of work really where <laughs> halfway through it, you know, let's say a two-hour live radio show, <laughs> one of the people has said to the other, "Can I make out of this big cardboard box a bishop's hat for you?" Well, I did that, and, and the, start fashioning uh, that. And well, yeah, but and the set of tape hurt his eyebrows. So when we went to the kitchen. I kind of did it with elastic bands, and that, that was cutting into his ear or something, I don't know, making excuses. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Carl, you are here for Ricky Gervais' amusement. Hmm. I think oh, if you check the small print of your contract. Have you got, I mean, have you got anything interesting about a monkey or an ape so we can do chimpanzee that? I know something that a lot of other people will know, but I'll, I'll... Well, well let's do it then. Chimpanz- chin what's it called again? Where should we do a jingle? Well, <laughs> do a little jingle for us then. <laughs> oh, chimpanzee that! <laughs> Brilliant. That's great. Right. So I look forward to that every week. Yeah. Um, and uh, what's your uh, interesting in fact. fact? Right. It's about um, this monkey ages ago. <laughs> of course. Uh, don't know where it happened. 17th century? I think it was a chimp. Right. right. Uh, <laughs> got caught having a fag. <laughs> 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 what do you mean, do I know it? Oh, now it down. Loads got, of chimps are caught with wood binds. Right, he got caught having a fag. So it was sent to court. <laughs> and, uh, Wait, was it underage? It was, it was, uh... And it got someone to go into the newsagent for him. Like, Did he get a bigger gorilla yeah, to go into the newsagent and get 20 Wathmans? It ended up doing time. Because it was, it was Go so back a minute, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. No, whoa. I don't know the f that's, that's as much as I know, so there's no point questioning. That is as much as you know, isn't it? Yeah. Quite literally. <laughs> Sorry, but why did you go to prison? Uh, it's, it's against the law to have a monkey having a fag. Where <laughs> in a built-up area? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's against the law for a monkey to have a fag. What if he got it himself? Even if it just, what about if it earned it himself, just like moving tyres round or mucking mucking out the zebras? I don't know the full story. That's you don't know the full story, do you? But do you think <laughs> you never do? Do you? I presume you? it was a monkey from a zoo, right? Yeah. Do you think it'd be fed up, though? Because in a way, it's home from home, isn't it? When I read it, I didn't think it was that bad because I just Carl, thought, well, they don't put monkeys in prison. They didn't put the monkey in a the prison. They're overcrowded. <laughs> they haven't got the space. Well, I'll, again, I'll find it and give you the, the like the, where I got it from. And you Chopper can... Harris was furious because the monkey got the top bunk. Yeah. <laughs> can I just? Uh, <laughs> At least he did. Okay then. Oh, chimpanzee that. Another one next week. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> rockbusters, right? Can I just yeah. uh, recap? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, actually, uh, I have to say you've really stumped people this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or well, oh, either that, or they God, just can't be bothered wrong. anymore. Well, or they're wrong again. No, no, right. Uh, I think the just... prices are so pitiful they can't be asked. Let me just explain it again, just in case they don't understand it. It's a cryptic clue, right? right? And it makes up a band, and the initial that I Sometimes. give you is the initial that the band start, or the artist starts off with. So, last week, uh, well, I can't remember, but we did we did AK, an exploding pet, atomic kitten. That explains yeah. it. So very quickly, uh, number one. No, last week right? we did uh, FP, 
uh, that you gave out the clue, F D free de pain. Yeah, it was uh, it was an error. So um, the they're all right one, this week, though, are they? Yeah, the weather stinks, doesn't it? That's that's the cryptic clue, and the letter is R. Uh, number two. That's the rainy smell, boys. Right. Uh, look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out, will you? Uh, that's R as well. And the last one, if you're going to do- rig That's rigging nanny. <laughs> if you're going to do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. That's CK. Right. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Plus, keep your uh, problems and queries coming in for Carl. We've got another one as well, which I'd like to give you after the next track, Carl, if I may. All right? All right. You've yeah. got a problem, haven't you? What with- Oh, yeah. Listen, listen to this, car. Listen Let's to play this, a record. Steve. Let's come back with this. Oh. It's an amazing problem. <laughs> it's a god awful small affair. Wow, you're getting celebrities asking you questions now, Carl. That's David Bowie. Is there life on Mars? Mm -hmm. Do you reckon? Uh, I reckon there's more going on than just us <laughs> messing about. I reckon. I hope so. I think. Tell Steve your problem that you were, you aired to me. Well, um, do you know how like I'm always thinking about stuff when I'm washing up? Mm. Um, I'm, just, I'm just gonna look at Steve for the reaction when this question right. comes out, okay. There's been a few things I've been thinking about. Do you know like how I try to confuse a computer by putting in Y in the search engine? Yeah. So, so along the lines of that, I, I, I was thinking in the week, if uh, you put a chameleon on a mirror, what would happen? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and also this this is a bit of a bigger issue. We're always making more and more stuff, right? Um in the world, you know, big buildings, big planes, mm -hmm. big boats and that. Will we ever get to a point where all this is too heavy for the world to handle? Right. What errors he made there, Steve? <laughs> what physical scientific error has he made there with that question? I can't I can't begin to explain it. Carl we're not getting the rocks from other planets. It's already here. It's like having a, a it's like having um, a big pile of books in a room and then moving them over to the other side of the room and building a thing going, oh, can the room take it? I'm building a lot of things out of these books. What about, what about plastic? Where does that come from? Other chemicals that existed on the planet. Yeah. Do you see do, do you see the point? Hang on a minute though. What about a little tree? You plant that as an acorn, it grows, right? That's bigger, that's more stuff. Yeah. Don't listen to him, Carl, he's patronising you. What about you. acorns and that, though? Right, they, they take, they grow from minerals and proteins already in our atmosphere or in our, um, the mass of Earth. What about a cat, Carl? Right, you get it, it's a very tiny kitten, but it grows up and it's bigger. Carl, he's, he's doing it on purpose. Elephants. Elephants, elephants. They, they're very small to begin with, but they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and so they get heavier and heavier. Mind you, dinosaurs have gone. You know, but you- <laughs> But you know, um, but you know that's, uh. you know famously that's how Atlantis disappeared. You know, you've heard of the, the legend of Atlantis. Have you heard of the legend of Atlantis? I think so, This on. was a, this was a city that existed, it's proven, yeah. right? And what happened was they just kept buying stuff in, mail order. They just <laughs> kept ordering stuff, like the king and stuff, just kept ordering stuff in, mail order. He brought girls across, carpets, you know- Carpets, a lot of carpets. Carpets he kept buying, TV set, big screen TVs and stuff like that, and eventually- He bought up all the mer. That the wise men didn't want. Yeah, he just, cause he's from like olden times, and he just kept buying stuff, crazy, like he was just a shopaholic basically. Mentor it was. And he was ludicrous, it was like, and, and in and the it end it heavy. just sunk, it just sunk. Too heavy. And it just sunk. So, um, um, to the earth, the more planes we build, the more trees we let grow. Yeah. From acorns. And more than that, what about all the, uh, the people that are overeating? There's only, there's a, yeah, I, there's only you know, one you're thing Rick in this world. I think we, we've got, a, I think we've got to kill off endangered species and burn trees. <laughs> That's the only way the earth <laughs> can survive. <laughs> you mental. Right. What are you doing? <laughs> right, uh, okay, look, quick um, query for you. This is from uh, Jay. He's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer. Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't know what to do. So he's got the arranged marriage coming along, and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right? I don't think Live the, your dreams? the arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I think too many people go on looks. Right. And then you soon get bored of that, mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with is actually not your type. Right. right? Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right? So I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then you know, don't go along with it. But if they're half bad. 
yeah. put up with it. That's sure. Right. The dancing. Brilliant. Right. <laughs> that's that solved. Brilliant. I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined, uh, joined a dancing thing just near, um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. <laughs> um, <laughs> went it? along, I wanted to learn some moves. And How I, old were you? Uh, well, it was when Michael Jackson was, like, pretty big, so, about 80, Five. 83, 84, 85, right. something like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it, um, when I went, it was shut and it had become, like, a warehouse for uh, toilet rolls. So in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? Well, you I'm told me before, you what, you did boxing for a while, you did dancing for a while, you had <laughs> true fight in the boxing, you didn't even get in the pl That's not an you yeah, Imagine well, if that was a film! This is not a, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> oh, it's shut. Next on. I mean, you, how is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he would have <laughs> won, won quite as many awards? Yeah, yeah, uh, brilliant. Footloose. All right? <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm fed up, they banned it. Let's go. Oh, it's shut. Um, <laughs> yeah. do, 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 do. Yeah. Flash dance. First, there was. Oh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. You. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you'll find something else. I, I, can't, I think I got a go kart after that. <laughs> I bought a motorised go-kart and kept myself busy with that. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's, always, there's always other just things. Just think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's uh, that. So that's, that's solved. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's, um, no emotional there, emotional problems I can foresee. Uh, if you follow that advice. So the advice there that. is do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not If she's not ugly. minging. Yeah. She's not completely minging. Yeah. Uh, and don't worry about dancing, get a go-kart, cheers. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Keep your problems coming in. <laughs> Truth, Rest Your Head by Gene on XFM 104.9. Richard Ray, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. While I was, uh, with Carl in that restaurant, while I was giving him the, uh, you know, the problems did the old fellow with Viagra and the, the two fellows making love mm -hmm. in the uh, in the cubicle. Um, we came up with a new idea because um, he is he, dumping. Um, do we need him? As I say, cause he thinks the scientists have got together. They're never going to wipe out a limpet or a, or a slug. Um, they, they they think they're good, but they're not that good. This is the people that are lauded as great minds, or, and Carl has brought them down. He's taken issue with them. Uh, like what? He went, right, um, great thinkers, and I went, okay, then, um, Sir Isaac Newton, the, the father of modern physics, he went, is he the fellow with the apple? I went, yeah. He went, there again, see? Why do I need to know that the earth sucks us towards it, gravity? He said, if I was floating around, it would be a problem, I'd ask his opinion. <laughs> I went, what about Einstein? He went, again, I've never needed and this is what he said, I've never needed MC squared in my life. <laughs> the fella who invented the video, I'll watch one a day. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Give credit where credit's due. Right. And I think that a lot of this stuff that was invented, like when we were talking about inventions, you know, I uh, started to look, look in books and that, finding stuff out, and there was some fella who got a mention on, on an invention site just because he came up with the fishbowl. And it's like, is it that hard? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's clearly a bowl. Sorry, you're, you're not putting him in the same category as Newton and Einstein, are you? He was on the same list. Einstein was on there. It was saying about him doing that, and Newton with the apple, and uh, who else was in there? Da Vinci, whatever. He, he was Leonardo on there. Leonardo Da Vinci. Yeah. Um, uh, is he the so, one who did Mona so Lisa as well? Yeah. Yeah. He said, he said it took him 12 years to paint the lips. <laughs> I don't think that's like, that good. That it takes that long. I saw, you know... When you think, saw so Tony Hart do like a, an Aborigian man with a elephant in the background in about three minutes. <laughs> Aborigian. <laughs> an Aborigian. Yeah. Really? An elephant. So what just, about some of the big names? Well, just, on, what's, your, what's, your, what's your first reaction when I say some big names from history? Go on. Gandhi. Uh, again, what did he do? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Right. Good point. Good point. Okay. Good point. But you do, well, yeah, all right. Do you, do you understand what he represents? Well, go on, tell me, and then I'll tell you if he deserves to be mentioned. But you know, his, his whole kind of attitude towards peaceful, peaceful protest, you know, it's quite a sort of modern idea, you know, you know, very much the forefather of, you know, uh, the 60s movement, you know, where people would sort of sit in, 
you know, in protest, you know, Steve, song, Steve, perhaps, Steve, or... Steve. Right, look at the glazed look on his Did face. Did I lose him on Gandhi? Yeah. Yeah. So, if just, it's Pick not... Pick someone else, do someone else. Pick someone else. Okay, okay right. well, uh, well, someone you know about that's obviously, um, oh, let's think, a great, a great thinker. Isn't part of Kingdom Brunel? Right, yeah, he's all right. Brilliant, thanks. Um, <laughs> what about... What about Jesus uh, Christ? Well, I'm thinking more your modern day, like your Richard Branson's and that. Okay. Who, like, you know... I would, to be fair, I wouldn't put Branson up there with, with Gandhi. Christ, New and Christ, and Einstein. But why? Stephen Hawking. Because he's mainly known for having a beard and a funny jumper. To be honest, yeah, you have to start including, uh, no, Noel that's, Edmonds. that's Noel Edmonds, yeah, you're, you're getting mm. confused there. But Branson's a businessman, he's not one of the great, sort of, you know, scientific yeah, minds. I think or philosophical in time, thinkers. right, in time... Whereas Clive Sinclair, out. in his little car, on his way to work, <laughs> brilliant. No, but in time, there's certain things, like the apple falling off a tree. Right. Whoever was sat there would have gone, that's a bit odd. Do you know what I mean? It's just that yeah. they were there first. But to be fair, Christ instigated 2,000 years of, um, religion based on his teachings. Richard Branson, to be fair, he did launch Mike Oldfield's Tubular Bells. Yeah, They're not the quite difference. comparable. It Jesus just, is there. It, it depends what you get impressed by, doesn't it? Suzanne's always saying- Maybe I- maybe Newton was there, he was coming up with a brilliant theory, like, amazing, he was probably inventing the helicopter, right? The apple hit him in the head and he went, uh, the earth's sucking me. The earth's sucking me. Do you, you know what I mean? Could have happened. But so, you know, my girlfriend's always saying, uh, you know, what impresses you? Yeah. You know, because she was saying the other day, do you want to go to Egypt? And I said, no, not really. No. She goes, but don't you want to see the pyramids? Not interested. It's like, I've seen them on the telly. Uh, okay. You know, sure. are they going to be that much more amazing when you see them yeah, in real good life? Point, good point, good point, good uh, point. How did you ever move out of your street in Manchester? But hang on, no, sorry, I'm interested to know because this is a, this is something that, um, that he came up with, and this is someone that loves him and that he respects, so I'm interested to see, what, what was your answer to what impresses you? Um, I don't think I did answer it. I just said, you know, the odd, the odd thing. <laughs> you just said I'm asleep. <laughs> 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 little things. Little <coughs> things. Like, I, I ran home the other night and said, oh, I've just learnt something today. She goes, go on. And, um, do you know Lego bricks? Oh, yeah. The name came about because some kid's mum, the kid was messing with the bricks, and she said, let go of them and come and have your dinner. Play record. It's got to be rubbish. It's got to Play be rubbish. It's always rubbish, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> well, 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 they're Scandinavian for a start. Well, so, the Scandinavian. Well, there is no yeah. Let go. Boys are back in town. Thin Lizzy, what a classic. Beautiful. Carl, should that be our anthem, me, you and Steve, eh? Eh? <laughs> yeah? Can I just go get a bit, a couple of bits of admin out of the way? Go on. We've had an email from Peter Goff. He has said, uh, where is Richard Anderson? Where he, is Dickers? He only tunes in to listen to him. Where's Dickley? Where's enough. Little Dicky Docker? Little Dicky Anders has not uh, emailed in. If you don't listen normally, uh, Anders is our biggest fan. He he's loves got some... us. He lo I, uh, I just absolutely But he's normally the world got of... a little bit of constructive criticism. Oh, right, Which we always appreciate. Not... Yeah, yeah, we're open to that. Sure, <laughs> sure, <laughs> exactly. sure. Rob, so... you! <laughs> I'm gonna shove this up your- <laughs> so if Dickie Anders is uh, listening, then you might want to uh, get in touch. Uh, also, uh, d dear Ricky, I've developed a bit of a fetish for the way you say winners in uh, your hit sitcom The Office. Um, I'm going <laughs> to get my fiance to say it, but he hasn't quite mastered it yet. Anyway, we're getting married in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks' time. Could you please say winners on air uh, as a sort of uh, it's wedding be present? Becoming one of the most popular requests at weddings now, the <laughs> me saying winners. So uh, winners. There's a few I didn't get in. Um, Thatcham, <laughs> Shinfield. <laughs> so, there's, there's a, a Woodley. There you are. There you go. That's, uh, that's beautiful. That's keeping, uh, them happy. Good luck to them. That's, uh, I didn't, that's, uh, Leopard, Le Leopard. I saw one of those stupid email names. If you're going to email us, at least mention your name. Because otherwise, uh, it makes me sound like a, a fool. A Leopard, the original name for a giraffe. Interesting. Thanks for that. Whereas Lego, was yes. uh, event when a mother had sent someone to get some, though there's no name for them, she went, can you go and get some? There was a gap, he went, yeah. oh yeah, I'll go and get some, because they weren't called anything. Brought them back, started playing with the, <laughs> and then she went, look, give me those. He went, no, she went, let go, you idiot. Yeah, the actual explanation, various people have emailed us in or phoned in now. The company was set up in 1934, it's a Danish company, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Lego comes from the Danish words leg got, which means play well, and it was later discovered that it was also a Latin phrase that meant I study or I put together. That's the actual, uh, where did you get that from? But the thing is, you see, that's where learning's got to be interesting, because if it even started like that, I'd just go, I'm not interested. Mm. I'd be looking for Oh! That. So if a, f a fact might be true, but it's just not good enough. It's, it's not just interesting just enough for you. Not interesting enough. Okay, another quick right. dilemma for so you, So if, if, if uh, Newton would have said, 
uh, apples are attracted to our heads, be careful, they, they attack you, that would have been interesting. Yeah. Total bollocks, but you'd have been interested, therefore, in all modern physics. <laughs> all right? Um, mm. here's another dilemma for you, a quick one from Kate. She says that she's a single woman, she's six foot tall. Uh, recently she's found herself being approached by men of, let's say, restricted height. And she's not desperate, but is it ever acceptable in her, you know, she wants to know now, is it ever acceptable for a tall lady to go out with a person of restricted growth? Uh, what do you think about that? If you see that on the street, do you think it looks bizarre, do you think it looks odd? Or so a six foot with woman with, um... Someone of a, a dwarfish persuasion. <laughs> You ca we can't say sort of that or or or, or the or the magic word, but you I mean that, no, that's a, a little a little a little a little um a little fella. Yeah, is that uh, so? There's a noticeable uh, difference in their height. Is that ever a problem? Do she's you it, she's six foot. He's three foot four. Yeah. If I saw it, I'd just think she's doing it. Okay, know. okay, let's not do this now. No, 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 come on, she's doing it what? Oh. No, for, for attention in a way. <laughs> because right. there's loads of other See, people. See, I told you, Steve. Yeah, okay. I know, but I'm just just I mean, is that serious? I think so. Well, I oh, mean, if it, whatever God, makes her happy. Please don't ask Carl no, these sort of questions. No, but do you know questions. what I mean? If it makes her happy, then do it. But in a way, you're not going to have a normal life. Oh, <laughs> God. No, but you're not, because they're going to get sick. I'm There's no so point bringing sorry. trouble onto yourself. Carl does not necessarily reflect the opinions of, of anybody the else in the world. <laughs> 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 Hold on. This woman. She doesn't live in a forest in a little <laughs> cottage, does she? She hasn't got long black hair and wears a sort of- She says the guy she's going out with is a miner. In really? a crystal mine, yeah. And he just sings all day on his Has way Has he got work. six mates? Apparently so. That, yeah. okay, what is it that, Carl? I'm, I'm still- th sorry, I wasn't listening, I was just was thinking about- Someone just called up and called him dopey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't uh, they? I mean, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Why? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you today? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just, what, is, big, is, what, you're fed up with people, um, uh, uh, taking issue with some of the stupid things you say. Lego was invented by a mother going, let go of that. What are we gonna do with all the buildings? The earth might collapse. What do you expect people to say? Well, Even our listeners know you're talking rubbish. And some of those d d aren't allowed to wear socks. I mean... Listen, right, last week when I did Do We Need Em, um, do you know when I called up, um, one of the museums and I... Science Museum. Yeah, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I wanted to tell you before when the song was on, but you're so busy listening to it. Yeah, oh, God, oh, to... oh, was I so busy listening to a song I was playing? Yeah, but we're doing a radio show, aren't All right, we? what's your point? Well, I just wanted to say, she emailed in to say I got her name wrong, so I'm just apologising for that. What did you just call her? I think I called her Jessica. What was her name? I don't know, I've got it on email somewhere. Well, this is not an apology! <laughs> no, I know, I'm You've just got saying... it wrong again! You've not even said her real name! How is that an apology? Well, I remember, I read the email, so, uh, yeah, I-, I But I, I, who are you apologising to? Apologising to? I think her name's Jackie, I think. Oh, you've got it wrong again, haven't ya? You... Well, uh, well, anyway, and she just said if you, you know, if you want to see dinosaurs and that, go to the, uh, museum. You were complaining about that as well, weren't you? You went to a museum and there was too many dinosaurs. You just said, he said you just need four. <laughs> no, well, Steve, have you been to the one at, in Knightsbridge? I think this so. This one that I called up, right? It's nice. You go in, you get a good collection of stuff. You walk in, there's three or four dinosaurs. You've had enough, right? <laughs> go to. I went into New York, right? Went to the museum there. Hundreds of them. You can't move for dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like they're responsible for them being extinct. <laughs> <laughs> There's loads of them. So all I'm saying is, if you want to see a dinosaur, um, go to the one near Knightsbridge. They've got a nice selection, some old vases and stuff. <laughs> it's worth going. So, do you uh, work for them? Because that was a pretty big sell. Well, that, that's that, that you could work that into quite an advert, I imagine. <laughs> Brilliant, so, Carl. So, what, you're fed up, aren't you? Because you had to get up early. Well, that's another thing, but let's- will we give out the answers for- Let's do that after we've played the next tune. Um, I have to say that the- I'm wondering if Rockbusters, like Do We Need Em, is beginning to run its course, because yeah. this week we've had very, very few right answers. I think well, you're just you, getting too complicated. Yeah, because this- his clues and his answers are rubbish! Why don't you start doing proper ones? These are good. We started off easy. If I you don't remember. know, these are- I think some of them are a bit tortuous. They but don't anyway. work! Some of them don't work! Well, come up with some stuff then. Let's play a tune. Well, I have! And, uh, we'll come back with the Rockbusters answers <laughs> in a second. You haven't come up with anything. <laughs> <laughs> the Gravediggers. 1-800-SUICIDE is a good tune, I've always yeah. enjoyed it. XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly it from, uh, Ricky Gervais, that's me, Steve Merchant. 
one of the 50 most eligible bachelors in Britain. I hope people as well, if you buy Company Magazine, if there's any ladies listening, every week, of course, I've played you a song for the ladies, and I hope now that you'll be able to return the favour and maybe vote for me, buy Company Magazine, vote for me, so I become, uh, 50, the, the, the number one That's eligible so, bachelor. That wouldn't mean anything then, would it? What do you mean? Well, it wouldn't mean anything then, would it, if they voted you and you got, even got into, you know, the top 30, it wouldn't mean anything because you've asked them to do it. What are you talking about? Because well, it, because because it means that they care for me enough, and then they are impressed and charmed by enough that they've actually made that effort. That's beautiful. That's I, beautiful think that, I think that would ruin it. <laughs> well, you know, let's wait and see what the results are. Do you think? Do you think? What do you? I mean, just uh, you know, I mean, getting off that, you know, because we don't want Steve to use as a platform to get in the top forty-eight. That's bound to. He's bound to beat a couple of people. Um, but uh, what do you think of him now, Carl? Now you've known him for these many years. I mean, what do you think of his looks objectively now that you've known him? Can you remember what you first thought? He, like I say, he's changed a bit. He's sorted himself out a bit. Yeah. Looks a bit better. How was he done? Was he I done? I don't know. His hair's better. Yeah, what was it before? It was just a bit nothing-y. Do you know what I mean? It was like a... Just like if you just let your hair grow and do its own thing. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas now it's got a style. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. it looks good. Glasses, he's changed. His glasses are stylish. Yeah. Um, just stay sat down. <laughs> like rockbusters, rockbusters. <laughs> Some people like tall men. <laughs> Go on. That's, yeah. uh, right. right, first one. Uh, the weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. That was R, which was rainbow. Right. Rainbow. Like, like rain is the weather, and it smells like bow. Body bow. Odor. Body odor. They so it's bo. It. It's bo. That's bo. It's bo. Well. Yeah, but you've got to play... It's not pronounced Bo, and it's not spout Bo. Um... Who calls it Bo? Everyone knows it's B-O. Um... <laughs> what, you don't care? You don't care that that doesn't work? Well, they got it, so again, as long one as they're getting it... One person got it, Carl. As long it, as it. One person got it. Of all the emails, one person got it. Um, second one. Uh, look, Gran, just get on the boat, will you, and help us out. Go on. That was R. That was a Ronan. Ronan, right? Ronan, who's Ronan? <laughs> Ronan. Ronan. Who's Ronan? Ronan? Ronan Keaton. But he's known well, as Ronan Keaton. Keaton. No, it's oh, okay. not. No, it's not anymore though. He's gone on, on his own, hasn't he? He's just known as Ronan. No, he's not. No, he's not. It's Ronan Keaton. He's always been known as Ronan Keaton. All right. Um, <laughs> so that doesn't work right there. Go on. Third one. <laughs> Next. Uh, if you're going to do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a little bit before you open it. That was CK. What? Shake a can. Shake a can. If you're going to shake, <laughs> you can. <laughs> this is the worst competition ever. So... It's Chaka. Have, have you got... It's win? Chaka. It's Chaka. It's Chaka Khan. Shake a Khan. No, Chaka Khan. What you got... Chaka what? Khan might have worked. Is, to who, throw a can. Who got all three right then? Well... Well, because basically what happened was people just emailed this. in three guesses, we're stopping and, this. The, and the guesses that were right came from Mandy Thompson in Hendon. That's ruined but that frankly, one. Then. Well, that's that's run that into the ground. That's do we need him ruined? No, we can't that's, just bin everything that's, on that's, one week. That's uh, I, I, I don't think we're going to get that. Oh, they're not as good as they think they are because you've only picked on Newton Einstein. You don't know anyone else. You don't know who Gandhi is. Um, uh, chimpanzee, that you've you've run out of. Uh, sort of I did like, like the one. jingle for that though. <laughs> oh, Jim Pansy that! That was a great jingle. Yeah. But sadly, um, we won't be able to use that again. So who's won anyway? Well, it was Mandy Thompson I mentioned, but as I say, she guessed, so I mean, she can have the prizes, she's welcome to them. But, uh, yeah. I think well, we should knock it on the head, Carl. Maybe she should come up with something yeah. new. No, I think it's still got a few weeks in it. I think we should ta take some time off. Well. <laughs> yeah. What about, like, the foreseeable future? Don't know. Song that for the lovers. Do you like just play A song for the ladies. Or? Listen, um, you know what's a, you know, I think it's maybe the March issue of Company Magazine. Buy that. Uh, top 50 most eligible people. There's probably an address or a phone number to call. And here's another song for the ladies, maybe just to charm you further. Tom the Model by Beth Gibbons and Rusting Man. Carl, say goodbye and say, say it nicely like you're happy. See you later. Oh, is that the best you can do?